six minutes. Good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah, I yes? can hear you. Okay, all right, let me go get my um, other eyes. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to go live. Um, so we still have a few more minutes, I think. Yep. So I'm going to go live on Facebook to capture anyone that may want to join via Facebook. So give me a moment.
So once this loads um, to confirm we're live, then I'll jump back on and we'll get going. And I think we are, yes, we are, we're good. All right, so how was everyone's um, New Year so far, New Year celebrations? Pretty chill, but good. That's good. That's good. Well, it's good to see all of your lovely faces. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of go, not kind of, but I'm going to go over what we're going to talk about in our 30 minute session. Um, if we need to extend it a little bit, we'll definitely do that. But um, Robert and I, thanks Robert for joining me. We are going to tackle strategies for um, achieving your goals within command. And so one of the things that we did um, towards the end of 2020 was we sat down or we had a class um, and we offered it in terms of giving you or going through the Kelly guide, if you will, of how to incorporate your goal, your 2021 real estate goal within command. And so what we're going to do is a follow up to that where we're going to talk specifically about strategies for achieving your goal. We will circle back and just kind of do a, a, a quick um, refresher on the goal, um, excuse me, in terms of how to put the goal into command. So before we do that, I do wanna hear from a few people if you wanna put it in the chat, um, but what are you hoping to get out of this 30 minute session? So if you can put that in the chat and then Robert, if you could um, help me monitor that, I just wanna be conscious and cognizant or we want to be conscious and cognizant of what it is you're hoping to get within that 30 minutes so that we can make sure that we hit all of those points. And so um, for posterity's sake, we are definitely um, recording this on Facebook Live. We are also recording this on Zoom. So that recording will be available this Friday when the week at a glance goes out. So the, for those of you that want to um, watch this again, but definitely please put that in the chat. Robert, is there anything that you wanna add before we get going? No, uh, I, 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 the only thing is I did mine just the other day, um, probably about a week ago, and it was fairly easy to get through. So it shouldn't be that hard and you can always go back and change it. So. Yes, yes. And that is the one key thing that I do want to reiterate and I will continue. We will continue to reiterate that at any point in time, you can always tweak your goal. So don't feel like it's a one and done type of thing. It's very <laughs> fluid. Um, and so you can always go in and tweak it, massage it, do whatever you, whatever your vernacular is. Um, so thank you, April. You did, um, it says, I would like to understand what my priorities and command should I be as a newbie? So yes, I, you're drinking out of a fire hydrant. So I do understand that. So we'll try to do our best to break it down for you and for anyone else that may need, but everyone else, please continue to put what your objectives are in the chat so we can be mindful of that. And without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna to get to it. Um, all right, can you all see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, I don't wanna start at the end. It wasn't a trick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so today we're talking through um, our strategies and what I'm gonna do is um, try to do this this way. All right, there we go. All right, so strategies for achieving your goals within command. There's, I, for all of you that um, have participated in our classes, I always like to have a PowerPoint just to ground us, to anchor us. And so this PowerPoint will also be in um, the week at a glance. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And then also again in the 30 minute session on, for, on Thursday. Um, come on. There we go. So hey, the Natasha, it looks like there's a couple people talking on the, the chat. Uh, April 2nd, or uh, Dorothy seconded April, and then Steve also chimed in and said, so it looks like we've got some newer agents here. So we'll just we'll just go as slow as possible. So Absolutely. just to not confuse. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So our strategies today will be three key. Um, we're going to talk about the strategies to um, maximize your goals. So what we'll do is we'll try to cover that um, as efficiently as possible. And then we'll circle back for those newer agents and talk about where to find um, how to put that goal in. Does that work for everyone? Um, then the other thing we'll talk about a social media tip um, that will be handy. And then the four key smart plans that you need to have. And then a Q and A. The Q and A will be open to anyone and everyone that has any questions. 
Okay, so our three strategies. So these are the things that are very fundamental that we wanna make sure that you understand um, and that you're working with this. So the three priorities that we are going to hit today and beyond are this, lead generation and command, nurture and follow up. Um, as Keone likes to say, I'm the queen of F you, follow up. Um, so not a dirty word. Um, so talking about nurturing and following up within command. And then the third strategy is tell your story. Um, these are strategies that are not Latasha's idea. These are vetted and approved. These are basically um, directly from our bold logic for your newer agents. Bold is an entry. It's not an introductory, but it's a foundational class in terms of giving you that mindset that you need to be successful. And within Bold, Bold's been going on for years, and we have our top agents, our I, top. Oh. Morning. Morning. I'm doing a Zoom meeting. Oh. <laughs> um, someone can move, mute themselves. I'm not sure who it is. I gotta go. Just wanna yeah. quickly mute everybody that Sorry. I see. That's okay. Um. So lead generation, nurture follow-up, and tell your story. Those are the do three strategies that we're going to talk about today. So then how to maximize those strategies. Um, I do have a link that I'm going to share with you. Facebook just released a few tips on ad campaigns. So I will also um, put that link in the chat um, very shortly so that you can click on that link and have access to it. Um, so that's going to be lead generation, we're specifically going to talk about that Facebook um, ad tip or excuse me, tip on ads, campaign ads. The second thing, how to maximize the strategy, this goes back to the nurture follow-up, which is smart plans. Again, we're going to show you four of them. The third thing, going back to tell your story, there are three key things that you need to understand when you're doing um, any type of follow-up you wanna make sure that you bring the experience home for the customers. What I mean by that is put yourself in your client's shoes. What are the fundamental things that they need to know? Make sure that you are highlighting that and putting that in all of your social media posts, just not your ad campaigns, but everyday posts that you're doing for free, whether you're using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, whatever it is, whatever your, um, your social media platform is, making sure that you bring that experience home to the cu customer. Because if you do not create a with them, what's in it for me, they're not going to be engaged. The other thing is share your story. You're, you hear us from the market center talking about this all the time. Do your potential clients know your story? Are you sharing your story? Are you sharing with them why they should work with you. Are you are they sharing with them your expertise, what you bring to the table? Are you doing that consistently? And then get personal. Share personal stories with them. Um, we don't need to um, have like a you know a, a psychology session, but we definitely need to get personal. We need to have our clients connect with us on a personal level in terms of knowing what makes us tick, knowing what motivates you, excuse me, what motivates you as an agent. So I'm going to stop talking really quickly. Um, Robert, is there anything that you want to add or any, anyone else want to comment on these maximizing strategies? And then we're going to actually switch over to command. Nope, I think I'm good. I, I, okay. Unless anybody else has something. Yep. Yeah. Any comments or questions? I do have a quick question. Um, how many of you are sharing your story of who you are and what you bring to the table consistently in your um, social media marketing. I'm going to check the chat real quick. I have one I could ask uh, or try to ask you about. Um, so if yeah. you're, you're, when you're new, you obviously can't talk about experience and all that. So you almost want to avoid that question, but what can you, what could you focus on to share your story? <laughs> Great question. I'm, I'm going to let Robert weigh, on it, weigh in on this, but I would say at the very onset, Steve, the first thing that you want to do is, and it, sound, it may sound crazy, but the first thing you want to do is just share with them your journey, how you got into real estate, what's your why, what's your motivation. That's the biggest thing because what you don't have currently in 
education or excuse me, experience, you, you have your story to tell. So definitely tell your story. Don't be afraid to tell your story first and fundamental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was going to follow on with that and say, don't sell yourself short. You went through the training. You know, yeah. you have a huge, huge team behind you. So you don't have to say, I'm a, I'm a solo person. I mean, you are a solo person possibly, right? But you can say you, you, you stand with 230 other agents and you're run by the top, you know, real estate agent on Maui or the company on Maui. There are, there are stories that you can tell that make you look larger than life so that i mean but like latasha said your journey is is pretty powerful to tell people where you were before you decided to do this so yeah i mean there's a whole yeah. bunch of ways to do it and i'm not too far removed from that so i always pump up you know we've got how many brokers in our office and what are our stats and pivot to something that is inclusive of the whole and include yourself in that Two quick questions on that. That's a very good feedback. Uh, one, is there a quick stat sheet about Keller Williams? Because say, for instance, they say, oh, it's the best company on the island, you know, and they ask, well, you know, by sales volume, by this, by that, by service. Um, the, go ahead. The one thing I would say, yes, um, we can definitely make sure you get that information. You can definitely go to connect. So mykw.kw.com and go okay, into okay. connect. Um, to look at the newsletters. But one of the things that I don't think agents do consistently is when you sit in on a team meeting, you can share that information, like our profit share, all of the things that we're doing. When we highlight agents in terms of mega agents that are selling, you can say, you know, I'm a part of a team, going back to what Robert was saying, I'm a part of a team. And over, as a team, this is what we're doing. You can talk about the training that you have access to. You can talk about the people that you have access to in terms of gaining knowledge. So all of those things help you tell your story. Sure. The other thing for new agents, don't get away from <clears throat> educating the first time buyer. So like go on NAR, go to, you know, to um, your brokerage, anyone or any contact and just, you know, um, ram. Go look, follow Ram, follow NAR. As a stager, I follow NAR and they talk about so many key things. And basically I just repackage that information and communicate that and educate clients. So, you know, first time home buyers, you know, what are the five things that they need to do? If you don't know that, visit NAR, go to Ram or whatever your, um, your affiliations are, and then just repackage that information. You can still, you know, plug them in terms of if you're doing social media, tag them, because what's going to happen is when you tag NAR and say, hey, did you know about, you know, NAR's recent, recent blog post about whatever it is, or Ram has a blog post or whatever it is, and then you tag them, guess what? People that are following NAR may start following you. So then you go out and you can have a potential client. So don't look at it as a negative. I would say look at it as a positive, a way to, you know, share your story, bring them with you to your journey. Does that make another, sense? Uh, yeah, another another add-on to that, Steve, is if you follow the internal Facebook page, the EAs and the exec admins and some of the people post, you know, things in there that, you know, we, at the end of the year, uh, Keller Williams in five years beat out an, another agency that's been on the island for a long time. And those graphics are already there. So if you just learn to cut and paste or snip those out, you can post those too with the proper, you know, verbiage at the bottom and name license yeah. number and all that. So, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. No, it's very helpful. Thank you so much. Um, and I guess the second question would be then, um, you know, share your story. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously I don't want to go on Facebook and have this two paragraphs full uh, of a story. So could you give me a, one quick example of, you know, sharing my story in this situation on Facebook that's quick and easy and, um, yeah. So the first thing you want to do is you could even say, um, one, one post that I would encourage you, all of you to do, if you haven't done it, especially if you're new, number one, if you don't have a post that just says I'm new to, um, I'm new to real estate. I'd love to help you find your next home. That's a simple post. The other thing that you could say is, you know, this is my why for joining Keller Williams. This is why I joined. That's another great post. It's a one liner. Um, the other thing is, you know, what's my goal? Don't be afraid to share your goal with your potential clients. You know, my goal and you can wordsmith it. Um, and one of the, the, the vernaculars that I love especially, um, I think it's Team Lally uses, in terms of they quantify their goals 
by the number of families they serve or the number of individuals. If you don't want to get, you know, if you want to be PC and making sure that you're inclusive, then your verbiage could be something like the individuals I want to help. So whatever that individual is that correlates for you in terms of a household. So if you want to, you know, your goal is five houses and you can say, I just want to help five, eight, you know, five individuals this year, you know, realize their dream of home ownership. Quick and, you know, keep it simple, but break down your goals or break down your story into that one post. And then that will stretch out the content because content is king. So if you can just parse that out with a simple message, you know, whether it's one day a week, two days a week or whatever it is, you can build your audience by doing that. You know, Marcus is one of our newer agents too. <clears throat> and he, he hopped on the video uh, piece of this pretty quickly. And you know, to do a video doesn't take that long. We've all got iPhones or Androids or something like that. You could be walking on the beach and do a video and, and it just has to be a quick one. And that could start you up on doing a, you know, Friday something or a Monday something. And like Latasha said, building that content, you know, start to build that following. But it, a quick little video, and you could take that video three, four, five different times before you get it right. Don't don't get too crazy about it. Just get it out there. Yeah, so Thank two questions. Both. Crystal, I'll get back to you on the number of um, total agents. I'll get back to you on that. Um, so I didn't forget about your um, question. And then April, yes, um, please work either offline, schedule an appointment with me or Robert to make sure that you have a business Facebook page or Twitter or whatever it is. So making sure that you have that business page. You won't be able to run Facebook ads without having a business page. So yes, definitely I would, I would encourage that migration and either myself or Robert can help you with that. Um, any other comments or questions? We're going to move on if not. Okay, so social media tip. I love social media. Robert <laughs> will tell you. I am Lush, 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 social media. <laughs> and not, and let me be very clear. I don't use social media personally. I use right. social media to tell my story. So that's what I mean by that. So I use social media for my business and I post six days a week, six mm -hmm. days a week, sometimes twice a day. So I'm serious about it. And so when I say Robert knows I'm the queen of social media, I am on it. Well, you know, um, what's, what's really funny is um, we used to have E-Edge where we drip on people all the time. They call it a drip campaign, right? So we call it dripping on people. And you drip this thing that says, you know, in the fall, change out your washer dryer vents, whatever, right? Something that everybody kind of kept in the trash and never really pulled out. The new drip campaign seems to be he heading toward these social events and so the way that you can manipulate or not manipulate, but the way that you can steer people in the social realm. So that is really a step above what we used to do and send stuff to things that people actually put in their junk and probably never opened. So. Awesome. Okay. So the social media tip for today. Um, I know some of you know who Zillow is. Um, or what they are. The one of the things that I recently found that I think um, you may want to capitalize on this, if you didn't know, Zillow is running or advertising a new hashtag. I would encourage you to piggyback on that. The hashtag that they kind of introduced to for 2021. And when I last checked, they were at a thousand people that were um, following this, but this is one of the hashtags that they're gonna be using in 2021. And it's called find my happy place. So hashtag find my happy place. I would encourage you, whether you're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, start using that hashtag because what you're gonna be able to do, and, and let me break down hashtags. Hashtags are a way that people um, follow their their interests or their hobbies. And so what Zillow is doing is introducing this hashtag in terms of find my happy place, place for people to share where their happy place is. And so if you incorporate that hashtag into your post, what's gonna happen is when people type in that hashtag find my happy place 
And the more you utilize that hashtag in your post, the more other people will see you, start following you, engage with you, and they could in turn potentially be a new client. So I'd encourage you to incorporate that, find my happy place um, into your business social posts. Um, so that way, that way you can garner um, more traction and more exposure. Um, Robert, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that. And then there's one other thing I want to talk about. I, with I, I love that suggestion. It, you know, everybody used to just do hashtag Zillow. And I think Zillow has now found another way to, you know, gain some information on people. But like Latasha said, this is kind of like signing up to be on somebody's drip. So this is a, that's a good tip. Really good tip. And here's the thing. Zillow is doing this. So don't do the hard work. Let them do the heavy lifting. You just capitalize on it. Um, and so the other thing, um, a lot of people um, get, let me rephrase this. Zillow is doing something smart, but they're actually helping you. So when Zillow sends out their information or they do post or, or they, you know, advertise whatever it is they want to advertise, keep in mind that when people are engaged, actively engaged, potential um, buyers and or sellers are actively engaged with Zillow, there is a 12 to 18 month window that you can capitalize on. Keep in mind that Zillow will not follow up or the SU with potential clients or agents until after that 12 to 18 month cycle, meaning that they're going to prime the pump and get them used to Zillow. And they're not really going to go after them, um, actively pursue them until after that 12 or 18 month stage, because it's almost like a vetting process for them. So in that 12 to 18 month game, if you will, be top of mind during that dream stage. This is my dream home. This is my dream goal or whatever it is in terms of a client or excuse me, a potential client that's looking for a home. Be top of mind. How you be top of mind is content, content, content. Utilizing that hashtag, just putting out content about who you are, your story, you sell and you know buy real estate, whatever it is you want to promote, do that so that you're top of mind. And so what you essentially would do is take that time that they are nurturing their client, but you're putting out your content so you can take them from them because they're not doing that consistent follow-up until after that 12 to 18 month window. Any comments or questions about that? Yeah, we did the one from April. Go ahead, April. Oh, um, I have a question about content. Um, like, you know, if I'm, if I want to be out there and I'm, you know, posting stuff to my, you know, my, my business social media page, could something that be included would be, let's say another person's listing. Like it's not necessarily my listing, but it's somebody yes. else's just to kind of maybe try and entice buyers. Yes, 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 yes. And yes, yes. So even if you don't have a listing, what's going to happen is everybody's winning. You're in the game of winning because you're not only getting it out there that you can help them you know, secure this home, but then it's also free advertising for that listing agent because they're not connected to your circle of influence. And so that listing that they have, they're tapping into another circle of influence that they would not have otherwise if it wasn't for you, April. So yes, you can definitely, you know, partner with someone that's a listing agent, reach out to them, say, hey, I would love, you know, to be a part of this, to help you sell this. Can I promote this? Nine times out of 10, and I know Robert's going to weigh in, they're going to they're gonna want that because that's free advertising. They don't have to do the work. I mean, they're still going to do the work, but there's added benefit to having someone else partner with them. But that's that is question. something that you want to ask them first. Yes, you have to ask them permission okay. first because okay. there's, you know, there, there are going to be some agents that may not want it for whatever reason, um, and that's their right. But make sure that you first reach out to them and if you are in coaching, the best way to do that is reach out to Nicole because Nicole is going to have that pulse on who's doing what and what they need. And so I, if you're in coaching, I'd reach out to, to Nicole. If you're not in coaching, reach out to your broker, um, put that fleece out, say, hey, you know, I want to partner with some people that are, you know, listing. Definitely do that. Another way that you could do it is sit in on the team meetings, the company huddles, Put it in the chat. Hey, I'm looking to partner with a listing agent. Anybody out there? 
So you okay. can definitely do that. Robert, okay. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say Dorothy was going to say something. I don't know if you answered it or not. Um, no, it was kind of a silly question, but uh, oh, uh, I think you've answered it. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm new at this, so the question was, does it have to be within Keller Williams? Obviously, it does. Listings. Yes that, and that's no. A touchy one. That's a touchy one because, you know, I went when I was new, I went and I was like, well, I'm going to publish the heck out of this $13 million listing. I see. It, wasn't, it wasn't my listing. And I, I just wanted the pretty pictures and I wanted to put some, you know, words around it. And I got contacted by the agent at the other company that says, what are you doing? This is, this is my listing. You, you can't just do that. So the, the, the rule of thumb, at least at Keller Williams, is the courtesy rule applies. They're listing their leads. But if you say, if you ask them and, and partner with them and they say it's OK to do this, which is like Latasha said, win win. Um, then, then you're good to go. So I would probably, at least at first, there's plenty of um, listings within KW. So I would stick with those. Okay. And then the other thing, Dorothy, is anytime you have a question like that, reach out to your broker. You know, they're going to give you sound advice. Um, so I'd always just reach out to your broker. But the best practice is always to reach out. Start basically. You you always want to start at home. You know, build build up home first. Home for you is KW. Um, and so there's you know, you could even get into the to here's the thing. There was a slide that we did or a presentation that Robert and I did last year. So odd saying that um, last year and it highlighted and I'll see if I have to can dig that up. It highlighted the top areas for real estate. You can go to that whether like Texas, a hot market partner with an agent from Texas be their Maui contact. So, you know, don't get caught up in, you know, my bubble is only Maui. Think bigger, you know, part, find, you know, an agent that's in Texas that wants to partner with and have that Maui connection, you know. So think about that, you know, another hot um, spot is Arizona. Um, the Carolinas are, are hot. Um, I can't think of anything else right now that that's top of mind. Florida's a, Florida's, a, Florida's a big market. Because Terry, I think, there you go. Um, Florida's a big market. Just remember that anything you can find inside of KW, if you go to your command and look and search, is somebody you can partner with. So look into referrals, look who's over there, maybe where you came from, maybe where you, where you want to travel to. So... Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. It is at least nationwide, if not further. I mean, there's Dubai agents, there's international, there's the whole bit, right? And one, one more question about um, creating Facebook and Instagram. Obviously, you want them to connect. Um, I've seen other agents that I know that uh, put their name, uh, for example, Ashley McGowan, re realtor. Uh, can you, real estate is what she puts. And she works for, I can't remember who, Sotheby's or something like that. Can you just put like Dorothy Cumberbatch Realty or how would you use a header for that? Because it's not, it's a, it's a business header. Right, right. So within Facebook, you have to make sure that you're in compliance. So, you know, for our compliance purposes, you would need to need, you would need to have listed um, your, your realtor status, whether that's S or excuse me, RS or RB. So you would need to make sure you have um, realtor salesperson um, but with the RS, and then you also need to have your license. Those are the key things that you need to have within the page itself, as long as the page has the brokerage in terms of if you're on Maui, Keller Williams Realty Maui, and the address and the contact number, and then our broker license, then you're in full compliance. Um, the one thing that I'll say about that is definitely reach out to us or your broker to make sure you're in compliance, because what's going to happen is this inadvertently, the more you're in this industry, um, the more traction you get. I don't want to say it in the negative, but people are going to always look for a reason to highlight something that you're not doing. So make sure from a very elementary standpoint that you're in compliance. And so if you have any questions about compliance, definitely you want to reach out to your broker, Michelle Del Rosario, um, 
and or you can talk to us, Robert or I, but really I'm going to always refer you and I know Robert will to Michelle Del Rosario for compliance purposes and then your broker. Those are the two main contacts, just making sure that you don't give anyone any inch of being able to say, oh, Dorothy or April or, you know, they're not in compliance. Yeah, when you are the when you are the biggest person on the island selling real estate, there are a lot of eyes watching us. So we kind of have to lead the way that way. And the other thing I wanted to uh, kind of talk about was that probably everybody's seen the FabMac Homes um, commercial on TV. Everyone's probably seen the "Thank You for Your Fidelity," the gal who does that, the Greg Burns one that's pretty upbeat and quick. Take a look at those ads and look what they do at the end of those ads. They have their brokerage listed. They have their license number listed. They have, you know, all of those things are in compliance because they know eyes are on them. So, yeah, but again, make sure you talk to your broker and make sure you're in compliance just so you don't step in the wrong thing. And then you said you you guys were going to, we can go to help from you. How do I, how do I reach you? How do I get help from so you? So I'm going to put um, that in the chat right now. Okay. Um, so that's our um, email address, um, Tech Concierge 1002. And then um, one other thing I want to put in the chat, um, I've got so much content that I couldn't cover it in 30 minutes, but I do want to talk about Facebook and then we're going to have to continue this on Thursday to actually dial into the smart plan. But I did want to do two things before we leave today. Um, answer any other questions. I'm going to put in my calendar link. So give me one quick minute to make sure I give you all the information you need. So in chat, here's the calendar link to schedule a 30 minute. So that's in there. Um, okay, couple of two things. Um, Facebook, I put the chat, or excuse me, I put the link in the chat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna table this for Thursday, but we wanna get into, cause I don't wanna um, breeze over this because there's a lot of content on this. So I do wanna highlight a couple of things. So we're gonna focus on that on Thursday. So Thursday we'll focus on specifically Facebook ads and then I'm going to give you the four or the, yeah, the four fundamental smart plans that you need to incorporate um, to achieve your goal within command. For the newbies, before you go off, I do want to jump on my command and show you two ways that you can access um, your goals or set your goals and do a couple of caveats for that. But before I do those two things, is there anyone else that has any questions um, or comments? I hope this little 30 minute power. 30 minute session was worth it and good for you. Um, any other comments or questions before I do that? Go into command. None? Okay. Um, so there are a couple of two ways um, that you can go in to set your goals. So when you log into command, I'm in command already. This is my home screen. You're going to have two options. So it says set yourself up for success. So if you have not set your goal, um, you'll have this banner. And so this banner is going to come up, um, auto populate, and then you can click on set my goal for 2021. And then it's going to take you to a Kelly guide. Kelly guide is your friend in command. And so it's going to walk you through step by step of what you need to do. So it's just going to say Kelly guide and goal setting. Then you want to say get started at the bottom. And then here, there's a couple of things, and Robert, I want to have you weigh in on a couple of things too. Um, the key thing that I want to mention for the new agents, you may not be familiar, but the goal setting is based on the MREA um, Millionaire Mindset book. And so he's holding it up. Um, that is based on you being a millionaire um, or strategies to building you to that. And so keep in mind that within these goals, you can tweak them to whatever works for you, but it's gonna methodically walk you through what's your annual goal. Um, you will be able to drop down and make sure you're in 2021. Whatever your um, profit goal is, 
you'll be able to put that profit goal in. Again, it's going to default to that millionaire mindset. So you just want to be conscious of that. So the couple of things you want to do is you want to make sure that you have an accurate estimate of what you think your expenses are going to be, what you think your cost of sales are going to be. If you have any questions about those fields, there's a little I for information. You can click on it. It'll give you a breakdown of what that means. And so essentially what you want to do is you, you want to follow this lead or excuse me, you want to follow this guide. And then Robert, I'll have you weigh in. But keep in mind this, where it says business makeup. Most of the time for agents, especially newer agents, you're going to be heavier on the buyer side than you are listings. And that, and that is okay. You start where you start. And so if your, you know, grid looks like, or your makeup looks like, you know, 80, 90, or, you know, 90, 20, 10, or whatever it is, or 80, 20, or 70, 30, whatever you're projecting, it is okay. There's no right or wrong answer, but just know you're going to be more on the buyer side than you are listing as a new agent. And then I, even as you get seasoned, you're still probably going to be, there's a lot of agents that, you know, have years of experience that still may be in that 50-50. So that's, you know, that that's okay. So I don't want to, you know, if you don't have the 50-50 or anything else, um, that's fine. The other thing is making sure that you know what your average commission per unit is. And so you'll have to do a little research. You can, you know, always reach out to your broker for that information if you need help. And then you just walk through this. Once you get that basic in, it's pretty much downhill after that. You just click through the next um, and you just keep going and, and it'll break down your lead. It'll break down your lead conversion context. Again, keep in mind that this is all based on the MREA. So you can keep it here in terms of leads to context, whatever percentage you think that might be. Once you have a lead, you know, what's the percentage of you taking that lead and forming the uh, appointment? And then from the other thing that I want to say, and I don't want to be confusing, think of this as a funnel. This thing leads to this thing. This thing leads to this thing. It's all connected. You start with the lead. The lead goes to a contact. The contact goes to an appointment. The appointment goes to keeping the appointment. The, a comp the appointment goes to an agreement. The agreement goes to a contract. The contract goes to close. So there is a system here. So keep in mind that this is all interconnected. Robert? Yep, I was just gonna say, um, is everybody clear on what a lead is and what a contact is? So a lead is one-way communication. You're reaching out to them, seeing if there's any interest at all. It's one way. A contact is actually, you're having communication back and forth with that person. So when you take a look at, okay, I'm, I'm going to do Facebook leads and I may get 50 to 100 Facebook leads. Those are really prospects, but they're leads, right? They're leads because it's a one-way communication. How many, what's the percentage that you think those people are going to turn into two-way conversations? That's all that is. And then once you get contacts, how many of those contacts that you're in two-way communication with are going to turn into appointments that you set? And then it, you know, kept, are, are you going to keep your appointments? Well, if I'm setting the appointment, believe me, I'm keeping the appointment, right? So, but for whatever reason, others may not be able to, you know, the people you're setting them with. So this is, this was confusing at first, but I think if you break it down this way, let's say my leads, how many, how many leads, uh, maybe my business is based on 75% lead generation, right? So how many of those 75% are going to turn into two-way communication. Back on the previous screen that Latasha was talking about, that 7150 um, commission rate, that's not a bad rate to start with. Remember, start there, see what it looks like, and you can always go back and change it. You know, it's not it's not a bad thing to set big goals. It, it keeps you motivated. You know, you, you look at your, your output, you know, when you're all done with this and you, you're all saved, and you're like, holy smokes, I'm not hitting that at all. So, you might need to dial and adjust a little bit, but just go dive in and then on the next class, we can go in and take a look and see what questions you might have. So then the other thing, and then I'll end with this and see if there's any questions. There were two ways I mentioned. Um, the one way is if you don't have your 2021 goals in um, and you don't see that banner, um, 
you can go in another way. Or if you even see that banner, there's another way that you can go in to meet, to um, enter your goal. And also if you entered your goal and you wanna edit it, this is the way that you can go in. So within your console, you and remember you can click on this red portion. So you wanna go into reports, I'm already here. So um, then you go to goals. So within goals, or let me back up, within reports, you have these various tabs. You have the dashboard, which you just saw, that's where you initially go, then reports, then goals, lead routing, emails, and text. We'll cover all of that on Thursday, just a refresher for the new agents. But goals is where you wanna be for now. And then it'll highlight what your 2021 goal is. And then if you want to edit or you want another way to set your goal, you just quickly go to goal setting here. Teal is also your friend. Again, it takes me back to that same Kelly guy that I first saw. So those are the two ways that you can get in to tweak, um, add and or edit your goals. So one of, one of the common questions that comes up is, okay, I've set my goals, but now I'm gonna hit that teal button and I'm gonna go back. Well, it takes me to the guide. Am I gonna lose everything I did before? No, you're not. All you're gonna do is go through that and be able to make adjustments. So you'll be fine. Okay, any comments or questions, feedback? Was this short session helpful to you all? Yes, thank Very you. Very helpful, yeah, thank you. Okay. So then I on Thursday, oh yeah, go ahead, April, I'm sorry. I do have a quick question um, and I have to apologize. I'm sure it's a silly question, but I'm new. Um, but I want to know what the difference is between um, all these different resources we have. We have, you know, my KW, we have KW Connect, we've got this intranet, back agent, we've got all these things. And again, I'm a little overwhelmed. And I just want to know what we should be focusing on and also, you know, what, what the difference is. Okay. So I'll let Robert weigh in too, because I know he's not in his head, but I'll try to um, give you as best as I can a guide. Yeah. So in terms of breaking down. So the key thing that I would say is if you're in coaching, um, the fundamental thing that I would do is go, I know Nicole has a timeline for you. So if you're in coaching, follow that timeline and that will help you stay on task. If you're not in coaching, then I would say this to you. The fundamental thing that I would encourage you on in terms of all of the information the first thing that I would do is make sure that you're up to speed on command as a new agent. And you get up to speed by command by going to YouTube, subscribing to two channels, Scott Leroy and also Marty Miller. Marty Miller does a, um, he just did a four, um, excuse me, a version four of what he calls the 66 day challenge. And within that 66 day challenge, he gives you the fundamentals to utilizing command. That is where as a new agent, I would put a lot of my time as well as lead generation because it'll go hand in hand. Lead generation, learning command, lead generation, learning command. The thing that to understand about the intranet, that is your internal guide of all things. So if you want to think about it as your internal Bible in terms of where to go for stuff, the intranet, mykw.kw.com, that gives you access to all platforms. From MyKW, the intranet, you can log in to Connect. Connect is a training manual that connects you to everyone worldwide, if you want to look at it that way. And so that would be my recommendation once you get past, you know, you're not ever going to get past lead generation, but once you get past at least taking the command series and working the com command series, i.e. 66 day challenge, and additional tools will be to go into connect because connect will, will connect you literally with other training masterminds, other people within Keller Williams worldwide in terms of the training and the tools. But I would say start there first because then you won't have, you're still gonna be drinking from a fire hydrant, but you're, you're gonna be able to swallow some of the water that you're actually, you know, that's hitting your face. So I would say start there, but Robert, I don't know if you have anything else, something different, whatever you have. 
Um, I, there is one uh, place that's kind of overlooked a little bit, but there it's the tech enabled agent page. So I posted in there, it's a KW Connect page, but if you um, click on that, it'll actually recognize who you are um, and it will take you to certain trainings and they're updating this quite a bit. So there's a lot of answers in, in this for new agents, for seasoned agents, for people that are coming over to command. We use this for recruiting um, in, a lot of, in a lot of instances. So, but you may have a certain question on, you know, I need to set up my KW app or I'm not sure if, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So, but April, you're right. It's a fire hose. It really is. You can go training crazy. Um, so, you know, just think about what it is you want to do and don't try not to go down the rabbit hole. That's the hardest part because it's like, ooh, this shiny thing over here. Ooh, this shiny thing over here, right? So that's the hard part. So that would be, you know, our recommendation to you. Any other questions or comments? And then we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, one time. quick, quick, quick question. Oh, go ahead, Dorothy. Same, same time on Thursday? Yes, same time on Thursday. Yes. Okay. Um, and the, so the same, question. the link is, the link works. So the link that you had today, you can use the same link. Okay, thank you. And then someone else said. Oh, yeah, I was just going to ask real quickly, should I, uh, oh, with yeah. the 2021 goals, should we just wait till Ignite at, at the first go around and, and kind of go through that step and then then every year moving forward, start on the beginning of January? Um, I would encourage you to play with it now. I mean, it's totally up to you. Ignite's going to start on the 12th. Um, so, you know, to get ahead of the game, you can even start now and then you can always go back and edit it. So I would say do the work now. Um, that's going to be my advice. I don't know if Robert has something contrary, um, but I would say get after it now. You can always tweak it later based on the knowledge that um, Nicole's going to share with you and the strategy she'll give. But at least you you have it in there. You can always edit it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second that, Latasha. What I like to do with the goal setting, even before Ignite, is set it up and then it, it kind of does a gut check for me. It's like, okay, I was thinking this, they're teaching that. Am I, how far off am I? You know, <laughs> am I just, uh, maybe my goals aren't high enough, right? So yeah, it's a good gut check. It's a good gut check. Okay, so you can always change it. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And I, I'll think I'll do that. Thank you so much yeah. for everything today. You're welcome. Um, Terry, Aisha, Patty, do you have any comments? Jim, Lucy, any questions that we can ask before we sign off for today? I have one more. Yes. Hi, sorry. Um, this uh, Calendly.com tech concierge, um, is that a calendar that we all should be using? That's I think that's the first time I've seen that. Um, I would encourage you to use it for your business because it's free. So I'm gonna always say free. So um, one of the things that I use for my business, I use it, you know, obviously for my calendar for KW, but I also use it for my business in terms of scheduling virtual meetings with my clients. And it's a free platform. Um, you you do have to, if you're going to use it for free, you can use it for a 30-minute segment or a 60-minute segment. You can't use it for both. So you just have to figure out, are you going to do 30 minutes or are you going to do 60 minutes? Um, and as a starter, I would just say 30 minutes because you'd be surprised if you're focused, you can, you know, pretty much accomplish almost anything in 30 minutes. And then, then that way you can always have a follow-up meeting. The one thing that I always say when you're you're um, interacting with a um, potential clients is you never want to end with a period. So if you have that 30 minute segment, you can always add a comma and do another 30 minutes. So you're keeping that engagement with the client. So that's the way that I choose to look at it. But it's it you do what works for you. But I'm going to highly recommend that 30 minute just to start out. Yeah, with a 30 with a 30 minute segment, you can always go long too if you have to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and you know, the nice part about this is it interacts with your Google Gmail calendar on KW. So if you have yeah. other things scheduled, it makes you unavailable. So other people, you know, their, their schedule sees you as busy, right? Yeah. They don't see what you're doing, but yeah, it, it's a cool, it's a cool one. It isn't, it isn't really a hosted KW app, but a lot of people use this for Zoom meetings to set up okay. virtual appointments for virtual open houses, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we will see you guys on Thursday. Thursday, just to recap, we will highlight um, the strategies and we are going to highlight the four 
smart plans that you need to incorporate if you have not already to achieve your goal within command. So we will look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. day. Thanks. Hey Aloha. Aloha. Happy Aloha. New Year.